Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. The past few episodes we've gone ahead and completed our paging implementation. If you missed it, I recommend checking it out so that you have a solid understanding of where we are right now. We've basically completed our data source implementation here, a page key data source. We've gone ahead and built a data source factory to go ahead and create that data source, created an appropriate repository, and in the last episode completed our view model implementation, leaving us off here where we can go ahead and connect our page list live data to the UI layer and get things on screen. So let's jump right into it. To get this up and running in the simplest way with our current architecture, we're just gonna go ahead and create another activity here, the character list activity. This will extend our app compat activity. Then in our on create here, we need to go ahead and set our content view. So go ahead and create a little file here, activity character list. This is very simply going to be a constraint layout that has an epoxy recycler view in it. We'll say match match. We're gonna take up the entire screen, give it the ID of epoxy recycler view. We're gonna go for a grid layout manager here. So we'll also set our span count to be two. Keep an item spacing of 8 dp. And the other layout file that we need to create is going to be the epoxy model layout. So we'll go ahead and create that now. And so very simply here, we've gone ahead and created a layout that has the material card view as the root layout. Then we have a constraint layout inside of it with an image view and a text view that sits on top of it. You can see here the background is all black, but with 4.4 as our alpha value so that it kind of provides that little background feel to it. And then we have basically just a little text that'll sit down there. And this will basically be what each one of our grid items looks like. Epoxy controller that's going to handle the page list that we've built. So we'll simply create here another file for our epoxy controller. We're gonna call it the character list aging epoxy controller. And here we need to take a look at epoxy's documentation. So flipping back here, epoxy does have paging support and we need to go ahead and implement or add this dependency to our project so that we can go ahead and make use of their paging support. So we'll grab that and flip back to our Gradle file. Uh, I'll put it back here for now. And instead of this, we will just be using the epoxy version here. We need to go ahead and get rid of that. We're all good. Now we can go ahead and sync, and this will go ahead and give us the ability to extend a page list epoxy controller of a particular type. And this just plays very nicely with everything that we've set up here inside of our view model. Uh, as you can see here, it's a live data of a page list of type get character by ID response. So we can very easily translate that into an epoxy controller as well. We will do so by extending the page list epoxy controller of type get character by ID response. And then again, we need to override a slightly different function here, but it's the same idea, the build item model. And it goes ahead and gives you an item based upon what type you've defined this controller to be. And then here we go ahead and return an epoxy model for the controller. So we've been through this before, we can go ahead and create a data class and say character grid item epoxy model. This is going to take a character response, which is of type get character by ID response. It will be a view binding Kotlin model that will be of type model character list item binding r dot layout but importer r uh, model character list item we go ahead here implement our bind and at this point we just need to simply load our image via picasso picasso dot get uh, load our character well, you know what, hold on. We don't actually need this entire thing. Let's make this a little more intelligent. Let's just say uh, image URL, which will be a string and name, which is also a string. So then we can go ahead and 
load our image URL into our character image view that exists in our layout. And then we'll go ahead and say character name text view dot text equals our name here. So then very simply inside of our build item model, we'll go ahead and return this guy. And this requires item dot image, I believe it is. Yep. And then item dot name. We will give the ID. Uh, does this have an ID? Of course it does. That was a silly question. And we will use the ID of the epoxy model to be the items ID itself. And there we have it. Uh, all of this is implemented, to be honest. So we can make use of this epoxy controller inside of our activity. Flipping back to it, we can define our epoxy controller as an instance of our character list paging epoxy controller. And inside of onCreate here, we're going to go ahead and fetch our view model and connect the final pieces together here. Copying our code from the main activity to just make this a little quicker, we're going to go ahead and instead of our shared view model, we will create an instance of our character's view model. Probably make this private. And then we'll say view model, characters page list live data, observe this. And then at this point, we get back our paged list. And we very simply on our epoxy controller, just call submit list with this page list. Final touch here of finding our epoxy recycler view by its ID. Setting the controller to be our epoxy controller. Okay, uh, I think that's actually everything. The last thing that we're going to have to go ahead and do is update our manifest file because both of, or because this is an activity and we need to go ahead and define this as such. So we will say, boom, it gets it right there. And then what we're going to do for right now, because we're not handling navigation, is we're actually just going to copy this intent filter. I'll go ahead and comment it out and then we'll paste it right here. And if you're not familiar, this intent filter is basically how we define which activity is the first activity to open when the application gets launched. So instead of going to our main activity, we're very simply just going to go to our character list activity. And considering we can't navigate from one activity to the next, it's basically going to be a one screen application as if this is the only activity in the app. So we'll go ahead and wait for this to rebuild here. Shouldn't take too long. Here we are installing, launching the activity. All right, so it is working just fine uh, outside of the fact that the UI is a little messed up here. So let me just go ahead and clean that up. Okay, and after a little bit of cleanup here, sorry about that, I don't know what I was thinking, match parent, match parent, obviously it was gonna try to do that. Um, but we can go ahead and keep our width at match parent because it's a grid layout, it will go ahead and consume as much of the width that the recycler view will allow it to. And then we're going to go ahead and just set a random height here. 220 dp sounds to be or seems to be pretty good here for the majority of these images and just for the sheer size uh, in comparison to the device screen size. So, so that works out. Went ahead and made the background of this text view a little bit darker and made the text light, uh, specifically white. So it goes ahead and just like stands out a little bit more. Um, but we can very easily see that you can essentially, you know, fling the screen and this is all working here. This all works because of pagination, because of everything that we've done. Uh, I want to clean one thing up and then I think we can hit some breakpoints so that I could show you uh, how things are working. So everything kind of goes all the way to the edge here, which is a little annoying. So I'm just going to clean that up in this uh, layout file here. We're just going to put a padding of 8 dp around the entire epoxy recycler view. And then if we just quickly rerun it, I think that should do it. And yes, that pushes everything 
um, away from the edges there so it looks like everything is completely evenly spaced. On the notion of spacing there is a wonderful attribute here item spacing on our epoxy recycler view which I believe gets implemented as an item decoration on the recycler view but you can see here the gap in between all of these items is set to 8 dp we can define that in the xml as part of the epoxy recycler view so again Airbnb thank you for that little bit of convenience that you provide to us. So it looks like this image is broken, but that's really not the end of the world. As we can see here, we are loading things dynamically, and then as we do fling, we eventually get past a point, yeah, where the images take a little bit, but that's because we are flinging. Um, and one way we can get around that is increasing our prefetch distance so that it will then go ahead and uh, make another network request sooner so the data comes back quicker so that it starts loading things in to Picasso a little faster. Yeah, but otherwise, I mean, this is this is great. I'm very happy with how this is turning out here. This looks uh, exactly how I wanted it to, and it's kind of cool to take a look at all these <laughs> characters again. Completely forgot about the majority of them outside of the main people. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at our data source here really quickly the character's data source. We go ahead and put we put a breakpoint, let's say here on the callback, and then here on the other callback in the load after. Go ahead and relaunch everything with our debug enabled. So as we can see here, we finally got something back. Uh, if we take a look at our page, we see the results is of size 20. And if we take a look at them, they're all get character by ID responses uh, that look quite similar or quite familiar to what we've built so far or what we've actually gotten when we get the character by their ID. And then if we take a look at the info here, as we see a count of 671, the next having this question mark page equals two, 34 pages and the previous key being null. If we go ahead and just quickly flip back to the Rick and Morty documentation here, we're getting all the characters. We can see 671, 34, page two and previous being null, so that looks wonderful. Then we see we're basically immediately being uh, triggered again for the load after. So that is just happening to allow for the prefetch distance to kind of kick in and to allow for uh, another page to be within memory. And if we go ahead and take a look here, now we can see the count still stays the same, pages still stays the same, but our next and previous keys are different. We can see the next key has page equals three and the previous key has page equals one. So it's quite clear that we just fetched the second key. And as you know, inside of the load after function, we use our params.key variable here to find out the page index. And as you can see here, it is two. So we'll go ahead and just free up this. Uh, okay, so we loaded the third page in as well. And then as we continue to scroll down the list, at some point we will trigger that load after again. We can see we're fetching page four. And if you take a look at it, we're really not all that far as far as down the list here. Uh, but that is again, that paging library, that prefetch distance, everything that we've set up so far just coming into play here. And then it's just rinse and repeat at this point, page five, page three. So we're clearly getting the fourth page. Uh, if we go ahead and, hmm, I'd love to somehow get to the end. So actually, all right, teaching moment. Um, if you right click on this little breakpoint icon, you can go ahead and set up a conditional breakpoint. So what we can do here is say params.key equals mm, 34, it should be here. And then we can hit done. We'll see it goes to a question mark here. So now this breakpoint will only be hit when this condition is true. And so basically when we are loading the, or when we're told to load the 34th page, that's when this will go ahead and get hit as a breakpoint. So my idea here is if we can fling this and try to get all the way to the bottom of the list here, just want to take a look at the snapshot of the data at that point. So bear with me as I fling this screen. And wonderful, we've hit our breakpoint here. Uh, okay, yep, the previous page here is 33, page is 34, the next is null. So we very clearly return null here. We're gonna go ahead and notify our data source that we have reached the end of the list here. 
So if we go ahead and just uh, play on that, we will continue to scroll until we hit the bottom. And at this point here, you can see the little over scroll happening at the bottom to let the user know that that's it. There's nothing else there. So there you have it. We have implemented our paging library. We've connected it up to our UI. We've basically done everything that we need to to cover this entire topic here of paging. I think the next thing we need to go ahead and do is, you know, connect up these different screens. And when they click on a particular character here, like Leah or Mike Johnson, we then go to the character detail screen that we've built out in a previous episode and we pass in the ID. So that screen now has a dependency on some external value, but it will go ahead and fetch that character and display that information. So we're going to start to build out a little bit of navigation in here and maybe we'll enhance our little character details screen to just provide some more information and maybe dive into some of the other endpoints they have here like maybe episode or uh, location or something along those lines. But if you've made it this far, I'd greatly appreciate a like. I know paging can sound extremely daunting and hopefully this has been a pretty simple approach to it and the epoxy library has to offer, which I think is, uh, you know, makes it extremely powerful as well. So we could explore that at some later point and maybe a pull to refresh. I know that was also recently requested. So. There's still a lot to come. If you notice you are not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out. Uh, again, a like would be great on this video, concluding our little introduction to paging. And I look forward to continuing to build out this application and bringing you guys more content. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.